What's up YouTube, Chris here. Today we're gonna to be checking out the 2021 Trek Marlin 5s. I have the factory orange color here and the Trek black with the dark aquatic fade to it. About one year ago to date, I did the same type of video for the Marlin 5s of 2020 and a lot of people liked it. So we're gonna try and do a pretty similar video. If you've not been here before, I review bikes and especially the budget, more entry level bikes leading up into the higher end. I'm not like Bike Mag who gets the Trek Fuel EX 9.9 and reviews it as if it's a bike we're gonna buy. If you like that kind of content, please subscribe and comment down below, share it if it's helpful to you. Otherwise, let's just get on with the video. So who's this bike for? Like, if you're starting to look at bikes, you're gonna come across the Marlin 5. The Marlin 5 is that great entry level bike which can kind of lead you anywhere. But has Trek done enough to make it a capable mountain bike and or a capable commuting bike? Let's talk about it. So with this kind of setup, you're getting a pretty wide gear range to it. In mountain biking terms, it's too many gears on the front, but in commuting sense, you're gonna get a lot of range and nice fine increments, which is gonna help find that perfect gear for the easier trails or easier commuting paths. Now, back to the shifting. As with some of the higher end models in the Merlin series, the six and the seven, you'll notice they lose gears on the front. This one has three gears on the front, which gives it a really wide range while allowing fine changes in the back. The downside with that on the trail is you'll actually kind of have a loose chain. It sounds kind of silly to say, but the chain will bounce around more, it'll slap around more. It'll be a little harder to get that perfect trail riding gear, or if you're doing a lot of trail riding, you might find you're just not using the two front chain rings, the big one and the little one. You'll just be stuck in that middle one. And then you've got a looser chain with less range on the rear. Is it worth it? For an entry level price, yes. Trek's done a really good job with this bike. Overall, you can trail ride with this. It has a really good front fork, which stands up to most. Obviously, if you're just starting out, you don't need one of these big, big double crown you see on the world-class mountain bikes, $10,000, you don't need it. If you're doing some entry-level trails, which will involve some bumpier terrain, some downhill kind of rougher stuff, the suspension is gonna work much better than your Walmart brand will. It does come with an SR Suntour front fork. If you kind of look around, you'll see on the internet that it sounds like SR Suntour is the basic brand of it all and Fox is the dream of everyone. But that can be far further from the truth. SR Suntour is a high quality front fork manufacturer. It's adjustable in a very minor way by adjusting the spring tension. So I'll make it a little more responsive if you want it or a little softer if you want it. So that front suspension, although simple, it gets the job done. Sure, if you start going to lift access mountain bike parks, you may be looking for something further, but then at that point, if you're going there enough, you're probably needing a different bike anyway, and you're passing this budget entry level bike. So that's where this is trying to keep this happy medium of budget plus a good value. The overall geometry of the bike is designed for that entry level position. So you're still getting comfort features like a comfort grip, and an overall comfortable geometry. So if you're just cruising around town getting ice cream, you're actually still gonna be relatively comfy in this bike. Again, as you develop your skills, yes, the geometry could be tweaked a little better for off-road trail, but that's not where this bike is. This bike is your entry level, go to it. So Trek's done a really good job with sizing of this bike. The geometry itself is part of it. It doesn't feel too stretched out. It doesn't feel like you're leaning over too hard. Like I say, they have those comfort grips, which adds all into it. As well, they have 27 and a half inch wheels in the small and extra small sizes. And then as you bump up to the medium and higher sizes, you will go to a 29 inch rim. So having two different wheel sizes really puts you in that optimal comfort position for stand over height and getting on it, but also giving you the fastest wheel without making it seem too uncomfy or too big of a bike you'll see some top end race bikes only come in 29 and that is because they're a top end race bike. They wanna be the fastest. Comfort is the last thing on the mind. That standover is the last thing on the mind. The Marlin is here to be a comfortable trail and commuter bike. Tires it comes stock with, 
to keep it on a bit of bow is a really nice Bontrager XR2. So these ones have been around for a while now. They're a really fantastic tire. They don't wear down too fast. They have a good amount of grip that if you are on off-road trails, it's gonna get traction, no problem. But it's not so burly and soft that it's gonna be a really slow drag of a bike if you never touch anything other than pavement. To keep with the commuting side of things, they actually load up all the rack mounts so you're able to put full rear panniers on this and allow yourself to do either a bit of adventure biking or just load up your office and lunch so you can actually use this as a full-on commuter. Depending on the sizes, you'll have one to two bottle cage mounts, one on the lower and one on the seat uh, tube, so that's kind of nice for it. One change that they have to the Merlin this year is you cannot put an integrated dropper post. So if you're looking through kind of mountain biking, you'll find that the drop post is coming up more and more and more. It is a little disappointing to see that they didn't allow for the internal post, but there are a lot of great external posts out there. The shifting itself is fairly responsive. It's pretty snappy. The front chain rings could be a little faster, but again, it's not what it's for. It's not a race bike. It doesn't need to be the fastest and putting that little bit slower, shifting, yeah, you've got to push a little harder and get that shift. It still makes the shift really nicely, really cleanly, but it keeps that price back down again. Something cool they've done with it is the hydraulic disc brakes. These work really well, and that doesn't matter if you're commuting or full downhill. They actually are a pretty responsive one. They have some good feel to them, so you can actually kind of modulate, as they like to call it, how much pressure is on it and it still feels like a comfortable bike to use. So yeah, this bike definitely can be your starting trail bike. Will it be your forever trail bike? I don't think so, but that's not what's intended here. Can it be your full on commuter bike? 100%. With the wheel choices that are on it, you could put a slicker tire on it if you decided you needed a faster all pavement one, or if you're getting a mix of rougher terrain, gravel, kind of backcountry road paths then this is a bike you wouldn't need to do anything with and it's a perfect commuter apart from accessorized beyond what it comes with. The trail side of it is definitely entry level, but it's doable by all means necessary. You can get out there, you can get on the trail, and what's kind of nice about this is there is some upgradability. Now, one thing to note is the rear gears cannot be changed that much, so don't go ahead and think, oh, I'm gonna easily put a one by system on this it's probably not gonna happen. It's much better to just upgrade the whole bike and that is truthful. This bike is meant to customize and accessorize, but with the fork mounting system being straight, you don't get a lot of fork choices there. The rear wheel just does not allow for easy switchover of gears and change of stuff like that. Maintenance, no problem, but upgrading to like a wide range one bike system, if you're looking into mountain biking, it's not there for it. And then same with that external only drop post, it's doable. But again, maybe you should be looking at a different bike if you're already thinking one year from now, I'm gonna do this, this, and this. If you're looking to get into trail riding and you're not sure where you're gonna go, but you know you may be into it, it's a great option. You can trail ride with it, you can keep up with your family and ice cream with it, you can expand yourself. And the price is so friendly that if in the end you decide you wanna keep going mountain biking, will now have a great bike to sit at home and use for ice cream and then invest more in another bike or sell it because the Trek Merlin 5s are a really popular bike and everyone knows their reliability. Trek's warranty is great with the lifetime warranty, year on all the parts, really good network of service centers. It's really easy to own a Trek and actually enjoy it. So yeah, I think Trek has done a really good job here. If you're interested in a Trek Merlin 5, I would definitely get down to a local dealer now. Check out the links below to see all the little specs. There is a couple of the color choices for women, and in that, the geometry doesn't change. It is simply just color choices in the smaller sizes. They do put different size handlebars on it. Again, all part of that kind of custom fit to it, depending on what size frame you go with. They do have a good frame kind of selector online, but if you're unsure, just go to your local dealer. They'll definitely be able to help you out. Last few features are quick release wheels, which are really nice to do if you're not used to that, whether you're loading up in a small car or just trying to pack them tighter or whatever it needs, it's nice that you can quickly take off the rear wheels. So I definitely look into upgrading the pedals. They do work, but getting some of the normal bite would be fantastic. Get a water bottle cage. And then if you're thinking, 
about trail riding, I'd look into maybe a beefier tire, but see where you're at with this one. Maybe a different set of grips where they're a little more grippy and less focused on comfort. And then if you're looking at commuting, you've got the rear rack options um, and lights is a big one now. Get seen out there, too many accidents out there, so why skip it? I think they've really done a good job with it. There is definitely better bikes out there um, if you spend more money, but price for what you're getting, the quality is there. Trek has done it, it's really fantastic, and it works well for what it's designed for. And that's what you've got to really take away from this. This isn't a downhill bike. Use it for what it's designed for. An everyday entry-level trail bike. It'll do it all, it'll do everything, and it'll actually be a really good bike for it. All right, thanks for watching. My name's Chris. Subscribe if you want more of these videos. I also do trail riding videos, running videos, kind of other bike related sport activity, dirt bike, everything a little bit. All right guys, have a good one out there. Get into your local dealer and buy a bike right now before they're gone again this year. Otherwise, good luck.